Hiya, Pop. I'll pop you. <laughs> now, Papa. Now, it's happened every afternoon this week, and I'm getting tired of it. <laughs> well, you go get cleaned up. Here comes Dad, and dinner's almost ready. Hello, Eddie, darling. <laughs> Are you tired, honey? Uh-huh. Oh, what's the matter? Something wrong? No, not exactly. Oh, now, come on. Tell Mama all about it. Well, you know that uh, division manager's job? Yes. Well, I didn't get it. Oh, that's a, oh, 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 Edgar, that's a shame. Who got it? Foster. Oh, well, don't you worry about that. After all, it's still the superintendent's job. Mr. Thompson will have to give you that movie. I don't know. Ah, oh, don't act like that. You know the old saying, Edgar. Never cross your bridges until they're hacked. Uh, until there's a horse the, Until there's two in the... <laughs> Come on, let's go eat. Come on. Hi, Ed. Hello, Dad. What happened to my petunia? Oh, you're putting in another mint bed, huh? Yeah, Ed. This is a different kind. That other bat started to get my stomach. You are uh, sure it was the mint? Oh, it must have been. The stuff you had hid in your golf bag since 17 years old on the label. Oh, so you've been at that, too, huh? <laughs> well, you should have drunk the label. I filled the bottle with shellac. How can a guy drink a label? Hey, Ed, why did they give that job to Foster? Oh, it's all politics. He's got that nice new home with a swimming pool, gives a party every weekend, always invites the boss. Well, he can't afford to do that. Of course he can't afford it. He's away in debt now. Well, that's one thing we're not. We have a nice little home and everything we want. Mm-hmm. Well, not only that, we have a nice little nest egg. Five thousand dollars in the bank. Did you say you had five thousand dollars in the bank? Yes, I said five thousand dollars in the bank. If I were you, I'd draw it out. You know, sometimes banks fold. And if I were you, I'd do the folding. You know, Ed, that job was yours, by right. Mm-hmm. And if we can do anything about it, you're going to get that superintendent's job. And what am I going to do about it? <laughs> you got me. I only wish I could tell you. Well, I wish I knew somebody could tell me. What do you want to know, Ed? Maybe I could tell you. I can imagine. All I want to do is give you the benefit of my years of experience. Years of experience. That's it. That's the very thing. Here, now. Remember, he's a professional listener, and all you have to do is state your case simply and in a few words. Oh, listen, I can't talk to that fella. Honey, you'll do all the talking for the family. You tell him. Oh, right? no, I won't, Edgar. You're going to tell him after all. You're the man of the house. <coughs> there now. <laughs> In we go. How do you do, Mrs. Kennedy? At this night, take it, it's Mr. Kennedy. Oh, no, that's my father. This is my husband, Mr. Kennedy. Sit down. Now, uh, we might as well get down to business. And that's plain to you on the telephone. My husband was double-crossed out of a job he should have had. And all we want to know is how he can get that superintendent's job. Quite a problem, isn't it? No problem, Mr. Kennedy. No problem at all. My criminal is three or four cases. I settled very satisfactorily only last week. Oh, really? Then you mean you'll take Mr. Kennedy's case? Of course I'll take Mr. Kennedy. Oh, well. Sit down, Mr. Kennedy. I think that's nice. Now, what should he do? A deductive analysis of your case evolves itself into the fact that you were a victim of unfair competition. Your employer, Mr. Thompson, is a man who responds to a lavish display of wealth. Now, it's easy to see your... Com- Sit down, Mr. Kennedy. It's easy to see your competitor, knowing that he responds to such a stimulus, has utilized a method which I naturally would have advised under similar circumstances. Now, some months ago, a Mr. Foster came to me with a similar problem. What? Did, did you say Foster? Yes, that's right, a Mr. Irwin Foster. Why, Foster is the job that got... Is the man that got this job, or... Well, he got Edgar's job! Sit down, Mr. Kennedy. Exactly proves my point. I advised Mr. Foster to entertain his boss on a lavish scale. He did, and you know it paid dividends. Now, that's exactly what I'm advising you to do. You mean you want us to ask the boss out to our house? Sit down, Mr. Kennedy. Have you a swimming pool? Well, hardly. You see, our place isn't really big enough, and that is only a 50 by 100 foot lot. Mm, I see. Then you must lease a very lavish establishment, complete with the uh, servants, gardens, 
tennis court, swimming pool is open. Sit down, Mr. Kennedy. Oh, it'd be wonderful. Why, Edgar would love a swimming pool because Edgar loves to swim, don't you, dear? That's right, Mr. Kennedy. You're right, absolutely. Swimming is not only healthy, it's exceedingly fashionable. And from now on, the pleasure and comfort of your guests must be your first consideration, and especially those of your ball. Well, do you mean... Well, all that will take so much money, won't it? Money, oh, please, what it will be important. Money at the outset must be kept in the background. By the way, Mr. Kennedy, how much money have you? Five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars, Mr. Kennedy. You're practically seated right now in the superintendent's chair. Yeah. <laughs> and you think that will be all right? Five thousand dollars? I think we can settle very nicely. Oh, that's wonderful. I think it's just too, too divine. Sign here, Mr. Kennedy. Oh, I'll sign. We have a joint account. Who's this, Edgar Kennedy. <laughs> now, Edgar, you sign right... Oh. <laughs> Eddie, you sign that while I blot that ink off your file. That's the silliest thing I've ever seen. You're not supposed to put ink up there, dear. Just on the pen. There you are. Sign and see it. Mr. Kennedy, you know I like you. You're a man after my own heart. A rugged individualist. Mm -hmm. And another thing. I'm going to give your case my very own <laughs> personal attention. Now, what do you think of that? Oh, he thinks that's wonderful. How do you like it, Pop? I think me pals would like a joint with a pool room. Billiard room, an excellent idea. I have some places listed here that can be leased very reasonably, complete with service. Oh. A personal man for you, Mr. Kennedy. Get me one, please. You're right. A footman, a gardener, a butler, and a cook, and above all, an exceedingly well-stocked wine cellar. And beer. <laughs> You're talking. <laughs> well, I think that's just wonderful. Now that everything's all set, I think I'll run along and do a little shopping. I'm really not dressing. Okay. So goodbye now. See you later. I thank you very kindly, Mr. Kennedy. It's a pleasure knowing you. And thank you very much for having painted so vivid and so graphic a word picture of the entire situation. Now go about your business and don't worry about a thing. I'll take care of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very kindly. Oh, George, change the sign in front of the old joint. Make it read Kennedy Manor. Oh, Mr. Gregory. Mr. Gregory. Yes. They're right. Well, here we are. Oh, what a lovely place. Isn't it wonderful, Edgar? It ought to be. It cost enough. Well, it takes money to make money. That's what I always say. <laughs> now, there's just one thing I want to tell all of you. Our psychology here is to impress Mr. Thompson and any of his guests that money means absolutely nothing to Mr. Kennedy. Now, come and meet the help. Edgar? Mr. Kennedy? Yeah. These are your new employers, Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy. This is Gregory, your butler, Watson, the chauffeur, James, the footman, Mrs. Sims, the housekeeper, and her help, and this Mrs. Kennedy is Mary, your personal maid. Oh. Show Mrs. Kennedy upstairs. This way, please. I said Mrs. Kennedy. And this Mr. Franey is your personal servant, Sylvester. Hi, you silly. If you'll be so good as to follow me, sir, I have your things laid out in the chamber. What did he say? Just follow Sylvester. He'll take care of you. And this, Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy. Last but not least, we have Billings, who will look after your everyone. And Gregory, I'd like to explain everything to you so you know all your stuff. Right this way, Mr. Kennedy. If you please, Mr. Kennedy. Such atrocious taste. Well, we won't see that anymore. I understand we have very little time, sir, so if you'll pardon me. <laughs> sir. I think it would be much better in the future if you would allow me to select your apparel, sir. Well, you don't like my clothes, huh? Oh, very much, sir. Pardon me. Hey, come here. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. I can undress myself. Uh, there's no doubt of it, sir, but I can do it much better for you. Well, what? You don't seem to understand, sir. I was engaged to try and make a gentleman out of you, and we don't have very much time. So... 
Please don't be difficult about this, sir. Oh, there we are. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Won't you let me have the bill? Take back what you sir. Now, is this what you wanted? Roughly. Now, if you'd be so kind as to release me from this humiliating position. There. Thank you. Will you kindly step this way? I have the water drawn for your bath. Why? Hey, listen, I had a bath this morning. Oh, yes, I can imagine, sir. Yes, sir. But nevertheless, will you please step this way? Look, Billings, I've had a lot of trouble with you. But if you think you're going to give me a bath, you're very much mistaken. Now, see here. There's no use creating another scene, Mr. Kennedy. Billings knows what's best. I'm not going to take a bath. Oh, please, sir. Please, sir. Billings, do you take a bath in the afternoon? Oh, oh, yes, quite frequently, sir. Have you had your bath this afternoon? Uh, not yet, sir. <laughs> uh, you say the tub is all filled? Yes, sir, and the water's just the right temperature, if I do say so. <laughs> just uh, the way you like it, oh, huh? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. <laughs> Billings, uh, lead the way. Yes, sir. <laughs> Water's pretty hot, Billings. Hot, sir? Hot? Oh, no, 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 no. You tip it, sir. Uh, no! Now that I've taken your box, perhaps you will permit yourself to be dressed, sir. Well, no, I won't permit myself to be dressed, sir. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, you won't. No, 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 you won't. 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 Oh, I say, is this Mr. Kennedy's home? Oh, and Jeff, huh? Glad to know you. Yes, this is one of Mr. Kennedy's homes. One of the small ones, you know. Indeed? Well, how does he do it on his salary? His salary? <laughs> he don't have to work. He just does that as a hobby. 
Oh, you mean he has plenty of money? Him? <laughs> Why, he has millions. In fact, he's figuring on buying out the joint where he works and firing Thompson, that sourpuss boss of his. Oh. I'm glad to know that. Thanks. Hey, what's your name? Thompson. See you later, Tommy, old boy. <laughs> Thompson. Hey, Tommy. This is gone entirely too far. Mr. Kennedy. Who? Oh. Oh, now wait a minute. Oh, I say, Mr. Kennedy. Oh. Oh. Just a moment, sir. Just a moment. Oh, no. Oh, Edgar. Now, Eddie, Eddie. Oh. Well, uh, I beg your pardon. No, Mr. Uh, I do think. Come right in, Mr. Thompson. Oh, no, that's not necessary, Kennedy. Oh. You know what I have to say to you will only take a second. Good. You know, I have something on my mind that I've been wanting to tell you for a long time. Is that so? Well, yes. Yeah. You know, we're making some changes in the office for us. I told you you'd be surprised. Here it comes. Now, in the first place, I understand that you're a very wealthy man. In the second place, I understand that you work only as a hobby. <laughs> and in the third place, you're not buying out the business and firing me because I'm firing you in the first place. Good day, Mr. Kennedy. Oh, Mr. Thompson, who told you that? I never said anything of the kind. Oh. Oh, Papa, come here a minute. 